Hello, I'm Professor Alex Pinto. This is the experiment about determination of lattice parameters of the tetragonal itra stabilized zirconia solid solution using simulated X ray diffraction data. So, the samples that we'll be working on is what's called itra stabilized zirconia. Okay, so basically, the base material for these samples. Uh, is the zirconia, so the zirconium oxide, okay? So as we can see here, like a representation of its unit cell. This uh, zirconia oxide has a monoclinic structure uh, at room temperature, so any temperature below 1170 degrees Celsius, uh, zirconia dioxide would be monoclinic, okay? Uh, the caveat about this structure is that it's very brittle because there's some sort of like expansion of the unit cell upon cooling and things like that, okay? Uh, so what to make the material more resistant, uh, an interesting thing to do is to make, uh, to stabilize the tetragonal system at room temperature, okay? So if if you can figure out a way that instead of having a uh, monoclinic zirconia at room temperature, we instead can have a tetragonal zirconia, that tetragonal zirconia would be much more stable, okay? So that is the case for those materials. Uh, there are different ways that uh, this stabilization by getting the tetragonal structure to become possible. One that uh, is very popular is what make is what's called to make solid solutions with uh, yttrium oxide, so yttria uh, Y2O3. So how is that made? So first, what is a solid solution? So basically, so uh, whenever we talk about solution, we tend to think about liquid phase solution. So we have a solvent with the component higher amount and then you have the um, the solute with the component in the lower amount okay so you have solvent and solute and then they form a solution for solid solution the idea is very similar the only difference is that instead of being in the liquid phase their components are all in the solid phase so how we manage that? So basically we can understand that zirconia kind of be like the solvent of the solid solution and the yttria would be the solute of the solid solution. So basically what's going to happen is, in fact, like part of uh, zirconia atoms will be replaced by the yttrium atoms, okay? So part of the zirconium actually ions. So part of zirconium 4 plus ions will be replaced by yttrium 3 plus ions. That's what happens on this case. And the difference from between their uh, ionic radii and things like that uh, kind of like makes the final structure, the structure of the final material to become tetragonal and not monoclinic. Okay, so that is the goal add a certain percentage of yttrium oxide, so it's called yttria, in the zirconia preparation. In such a way, you can have like a mix of then in the end, uh, so like a solid solution of then of those two oxides. And by being in a solid solution, the resulting material is going to retain many properties of the pure zirconia, but what's more needed is that what's going to change is the crystalline system that you assume at room temperature. And by doing that, um, that you're gonna get like a more stable crystalline system. So that is the goal. So that is the reason why people prepare solid solutions from different oxides, from different transition metals. For tetragonal system, we also can have a certain equation where you can uh, work with Bragg's law. 
and find some dependence between the diffraction angle, half of the diffraction angle, so to the angle theta, the Miller indices, A, D, K, L, and let's see parameters, A, B, and C, and the wavelength of the incident X-ray. In the case of the trigonal system, the equation we'll be working with is the equation number two that we see here. So sine square of theta, remember that theta should be in radians to be able to use this equation, okay? It's equal to the lambda square. Lambda is the wavelength of the incident X-ray over four, multiplied by Miller indices A square plus the Miller indices K square over A square, okay? A is the lattice parameter, which is the same as B. Then on this multiplication, we have another term to the addition, which is L square over C square. What's interesting about this equation number two is that you see that unlike uh, we have for cubic system, so cubic system as A, B, and C are all the same. So the equation we learned previously, they depended only on a, okay, because A, B, and C are the same. But on this case, as A is different from C, so we have an equation that depends simultaneously from A, in the case A square, and the C, so C square, okay? And you, another interesting feature of this equation is that the terms are separated in different uh, places in the addition, okay? So what we're gonna do uh, related to that is, so basically we can set like some sort of boundary conditions or extreme conditions where we will be looking only to the A certain times in order to determine A, and then you'll be looking at only to C in order to be able to determine C. So let's see what, how you can adjust this equation number two in certain way that it allows us to determine the lattice parameter A. So to determine the lattice parameter A, uh, we simply are going to work with this equation number two only with the peaks which the Miller indices have L equals zero. So H and K both different from zero and L equals zero. So that's how we will be working with those Miller indices, okay? So this way, that equation number, if you consider that L equals zero, that equation number two can be simplified to the equation three, okay? We simply disregard the term uh, which depends on C, okay? Because L would be equal zero. So that's how we're gonna use, so we're gonna use this equation number three uh, to be able to determine the lattice parameter A. And then as our goal is to determine A, so you can rearrange that equation number three in such a way that our unknown becomes the A. So in that case, we have A is equal lambda over two times sine squared times square root of A to square plus k squared, okay? So equation four, that's what we're going to program on Excel uh, to allow us to calculate the lattice parameter A, okay? And then next, supposing that you were able to determine A, then we should be able to determine C, okay? So for C, what we can do is we take again that equation three, and then we're going to disregard all the terms that are dependent on a or a square, okay? Or basically all the terms that are dependent uh, from a to square plus k square. So if you come back here, so basically we're going to disregard this term over here, okay? So we're completely disregard that. So our equation would become something like sine square of theta equal to lambda square over four times L square over C square. That's how we'll be working to figure out the lattice parameter C. And then if you rearrange that equation in such a way that C becomes our unknown, 
to be able to figure out the lattice parameter C, the equation we're going to be working on on Excel is the lambda over 2 times sine squared times L. To calculate the lattice parameters of the samples of zirconia doped by Itra, uh, we're going to need to uh, use two softwares. First, we'll be using Mercury to simulate the powder uh, x-ray diffraction pattern, okay? And then we'll be using also Excel uh, to do the calculation, okay? But you're welcome to use any other software that allows us to do that calculation. Uh, input the C file in order to simulate the diffraction pattern, we click File, Open, and then you click in Zirconia, um, then you choose the file, so that's here, it's already in the folder that I want, so I choose the proper CIF file that I downloaded from the crystallographic open database, and then you open here in Mercury, okay? So that's here. Now, uh, next, we click here in the bottom center of the screen in the button written powder, okay? And then that's going to simulate the pattern. So y, y axis is the intensity, x axis is the position given into theta, which is measured in degrees. So we need to customize our pattern such a way we get more peaks than we are seeing right now. So far you're seeing, you're seeing only one, two, three, four peaks. So let's customize in such a way, so we click in the button customize, and then you click the tab pattern, and then let's, so the wavelength, we leave this one, 1.54056, we turn for the copper key alpha radiation, okay, so the wavelength of the incoming X-rays, so we change the starting uh, angle from two, and the stopping the finish angle to 100, okay? The other things like the to theta, uh, the step, we can leave 0 0.02, include hydrogens, for our case it doesn't matter because we don't have hydrogens at all, so that's not going to make a difference. Uh, and here, let me show something new, okay? So we see that um, if you apply, so let's apply this and see the range changing, okay? So you see that now is varying from about 5 to 50, when I click apply, you see the x-axis changing like from 2 to about 100. So let's apply and see. That's exactly what happened in the x-axis. So you see that now uh, the x-axis is varying from 2 to 100, okay? And then you see many more peaks present now, okay? So the other thing we can change is the full width of half maximum. The full width of half maximum, maximum is measured in 2 theta, okay? So basically, this full width of half maximum is kind of like the measurement of the width of the peak in half of uh, its maximum intensity. And this full width of half maximum is inversely proportional uh, to the particle size. That's approximation, but we can say that, okay? Uh, in that case, so if the particles are smaller, the peaks in XRD will be broad. Uh, if the particles are big, the peaks will be very narrow. So at this moment, the standard here is the FWAGM full width F half maximum to be set at 0.1. So that would be relatively narrow peak, that would correspond to a very big particle. Uh, one thing that Mercury truly allows us to do is to uh, change this full width of half maximum. So we can simulate that the pattern relates like to a much smaller particle, even in the nanometer regime, okay? So we can change here for 0 0.1 to 0. Uh, 9, for instance, okay? So it will be a very small particle. And then we apply, 
and you see what will happen with the pics. So you see all the pics got very broad, but as the pics got broad, there is a, a big chance that some of them got overlapped as well, okay? Uh, a good example, I think, is this peak around 35. So let's put it back 0 0.1. You see, let's zoom in. To zoom in, you click the left button, trace the rectangle there you want to zoom in, and then you see, okay? That's two peaks. When you zoom in, when you increase the FWHM, in such a way simulating a smaller nanoparticle, the peak will be too broad. Let's see. Let's see again, this peak is 35. In such a way that they kind of overlap each other. So basically we lose some information because the peaks become so broad in such a way that uh, some peaks may overlap and literally disappear from the pattern. It's there, but it's contained uh, within like a higher intensity peak, basically. So let's find like a value, I would say something around uh, 0 0.5. Yeah, we lose information, so 0 0.2, so like divide this the size by two, 0 0.3, 0 so you see at 0 0.3 that's when you start seeing the peaks coalescing okay uh, that will be a good exercise to ask the students to calculate for different particle sizes and see if you, they notice any change okay for now let's calculate just for 0 0.1 as the peaks will be very narrow and you'll be able to see as many peaks as possible Okay, so that's how we're going to simulate that on Mercury. So, and that's the pattern we will be using. Next, we're gonna take this data and put that back and use them uh, and plug them this data for each peak and plug it in on Excel. To save time after uh, the column we called for the two data position, we can create three columns, age, key, L, which each one of them, we are going to input the respective values for the Miller indices for each peak, okay? So let's take in, start taking the data from Mercury. So again, the first peak is located in 30.345, okay? So we can Plug that to theta 30.345. And then we have an HKL for that equals to 101. Okay, so 1 for H, 0 for Q, and L equal 1. Now let's go to the second peak. Second peak, you can zoom in on that because uh, probably there's one peak that kind of like merged to the other, okay? We have peak very close to the other. So the second peak will be this one, low intensity, uh, which has a two theta equals 34.74. 7.54, let's see. around 754 754 and the Miller indices for this peak is 0 for age 0 for key L equal 2 0 0 2 then the third peak 35.055 And the HKL for that equals to 110. 
at this point you have seen how to copy uh, three peaks uh, with their two theta position and the middle indices from the simulated x-ray diffraction pattern in Mercury to the Excel, okay? But as this pattern contains 21 peaks, in order to save time, we're going to skip the video to the point where the two theta position and the Miller indices of all the peaks have already been copied to the Excel spreadsheet. So you can see that there are a lot of um, peaks present in this structure in the range from 2 to 100 theta degrees, okay? It happens this way because uh, the trigonal structure as they are less symmetric as the cubic one, so they tend to present many more peaks in the X-ray diffraction pattern, okay? Uh, as we could see here, okay, so I have 21 peaks in such a way that uh, we fill it all them out. So basically, all the information that we need, it's uh, from Mercury and from the simulated pattern is present here. Now, we only need to do calculation here on Excel, okay? So, this uh, next column, we are going to use that to convert the two theta position for each peak from degrees to radians. So, we go formulas on this version of Excel, we go formula, insert function. Then the function used is the radians, okay? R-A-D-I-A-N-S, okay? We click here, we select the value, the peak center, the two theta position from column B, and click OK. So that converted the 30.345 degrees to 0 0.529 radians, okay? And then you can drag down here and have the remaining 20 uh, rows filled out. Next column, we're going to take those two theta values that are in radians and divide them all by 2, okay? In such a way that we are going to do that because uh, both equations that you need to calculate respectively calculate the lattice parameters A and C, uh, in both of them we have a two uh, assigned data, sorry, that shows up there. So we have to first, as we did, convert the angle from degree to radians, and next divide that angle in radians by two, okay? So as the pattern shows two theta, we need the theta angle, not the two theta. That's the reason why we're going to divide the values by two. So take equal sign, take this, click in the value and two theta from the previous column and divide that by two. Then you can drag down the spreadsheet, okay? Now, we can use the function to calculate the sine of the theta angle. So we go again, insert function in Excel, and use the function sine, S-I-N, okay? Sine. Then we select the angle theta in radians. So yeah, so this is the, the sine of the angle, okay? Next, we will need to calculate for the to calculate the lattice parameter A. Uh, we will need uh, to have the Miller indices A to the square plus the Miller indices K to the square. Okay, so here, respectively, in our spreadsheet. The Miller indices H is located in the third column, and the Miller indices uh, key is located in the four, fourth column, okay? So we're going to take the value in the third column and square that and add up to the square of the value in the fourth column, okay? So we end up in one in this case, and then we do for the all the others, okay? 
At this point, we have all the information we need to be able to calculate both lattice parameters, A and C. A will be calculated according to the equation 4, which shows that is the ratio between the lambda, the, the wavelength of the incoming x-rays over 2 times sine theta, multiply by the square root of a square plus k square. Okay, so that's how we're going to calculate a. The let's see parameter c we're going to calculate according to equation 5, which is basically the ratio between lambda over 2 times sine theta, that ratio multiplied by the, by the meter indices l. So those are the two equations we're going to use next to calculate a and c respectively. So, next step, let's create a column where we're going to do the ratio between lambda over 2 times sine theta, okay? So, let's do this, this column J. Lambda over 2 times sine theta. So, Sine lambda is equal to 1.540.36 angstroms, okay, divided by 2 times sine theta, which is located in the column H. Okay, and then you can drag the cursor down for the remaining twin lines. Okay, then to make things easier to calculate the lattice parameter A, let's next make a column where you can calculate the square, uh, the, the square ratio, uh, the square root of the A square plus K square. Okay, the square root, we know the function is the SQRT, so we can formula, insert function. Square root. And then we calculate the square root of the values present in the column I. Okay, so now we truly have everything we need to calculate both A and C at this point. So to calculate the lattice parameter A, we can simply do the multiplication between the values present in the column J and the values present in the column K. But remember, although we can theoretically do for any one of the peaks here, only the values where the Miller indices uh, have the Miller indices L equals zero will be truly valid, okay? So let's put them in red here. Those are the ones located for the peak number three. Then for the peak number six. Then for the peak number 12. And finally for the peak number 17. Okay, so we're gonna just keep for all the, for these four peaks, okay? So to calculate A, the value is the ratio lambda over two times sine theta, which is in the column J, multiplied by the square root of A squared plus K squared. Okay, then I'm gonna, let's raster down to all the columns, okay? But let's keep only the values for the three peaks we kept in red. So this for the peak number three is a valid value for A. 
this for the pick number six is another value that is valid for a this one in pick 13 pick 12 sorry is also valid for a and then on pick 17 as well okay so those are the ones they're going to use to average then you can delete all the other ones And then we can calculate for the let's see parameter C, okay? So the let's parameter C is equal to the product between the ratio lambda over 2 times sine theta, which is located in the column J, multiplied by the Miller indices L, which is in the column E. Okay, so you can again drag down for all the values, but you're gonna just keep for the ones where both Miller indices H and K are equal to zero. So let's put it in on blue. That is the case for the peak number two. And for the peak number 11, okay? Those are the two that are gonna keep to use to calculate the average. and then pick number 11 then the other ones you can delete okay so far we have calculated the A and C now let's just take the average and the standard deviation for each one of those let's parameters. So A average and A standard deviation. Okay, so the average A, we come here, formula, insert function, the function is the average. So we select the four values we got for A. And we found out that the average, actually here, the A and B, A and C, they are in angstroms because we plug the lambda on angstrom, okay, when you set up the formula in column J. Let's correct that, so that is angstroms. So that is the, let's parameter A, 3.660, and the standard deviation for that, we can figure out using the function stdev.p okay so pretty small standard deviation which is in the order of 10 to the minus 4 okay very small standard deviation then you can calculate the Average for C. So the average for C is just two values. So select them. So that's equal to 5.157 angstrom, approximately. And the standard deviation find with the function stdv.p then the two values also in the order of 10 to the minus 4 okay so very small as well okay so 
With this calculation, we complete the goal we set at the beginning of this video, that's to calculate the let's parameters A and C for a solid solution with the composition uh, present in the itra, uh, stabilized, uh, itra stabilized zirconia composition, okay? So, that, uh, so we got A and C, we follow all the steps here in the spreadsheet, okay? So I hope you have enjoyed that, you have learned something useful. Thank you so much for watching, bye bye!